So let's go back into understanding antioxidant and what makes hydrogen as a very unique antioxidant. We know that antioxidants, at least I think most of you guys understand that antioxidants are very powerful and very important in our life. We, are, we, are, we have an ex we constantly expose a lot of oxidation. So what are free radical or oxidants? They are molecules that are damaging cellular uh, membrane or cellular tissue or essentially very reactive. So they can potentially damage. And many of them have an oxygen, they have an oxygen in them, and so they're called oxidants. And so what happens with free radical damage, whether it comes from smoking, like Dr. Filzer showed, whether it comes from drinking, you know, over drinking, I guess I should say, so you don't hate me. Um, the eating, eating food that's contaminated with a lot of chemicals, stressing, you know, driving in traffic, having emotional stress, losing a loved one, whatever that is, all of those things cause a lot of free radical damage. And a lot of free radicals are actually generated by our body. So when we are going through stress, physiological, mental, or emotional, there is a free radical generation that could happen. There is also natural occurrence of free radicals when we even breathing, just basically cellular respiration gets a lot of, it creates a lot of uh, free radicals. However, if we, and, and we are built, and there is lots of potential for us to receive a lot of antioxidants, if we were living and uh, if our lifestyle was the same, the kind of lifestyle that we were meant to live, if we lived in the loving communities and surrounded by, you know, incredible emotion, comfortable state of mind most of the time, the, that relaxation state, the body will produce a lot of antioxidants to deal with them. If we're eating what we're supposed to eat, like a lot of fruits, vegetables, greens, you know, drink a lot of good water, we would also generate, generate a lot of antioxidants. So we can also consume antioxidants in supplementation. So consuming antioxidants in supplementation, uh, if anybody, guys, do you have any idea? Of, can, you, can you name a few, just the ones that you know? Kangen water. Kangen water is a fantastic antioxidant. Okay, so we got it, we can get it from food, green tea. Broccoli, vitamin C, glutathione, superfoods, right? So we're thinking superfoods that have a lot of nutrients. Okay, awesome. So a lot of naturally occurring elements or naturally occurring foods or naturally occurring water will have those antioxidants. And we definitely want to have a lot of access to it. When it comes to supplementation, people are consuming a lot of they can consume glutathione and acetylcysteine, they can consume vitamin C, they can consume a lot of different things to boost that antioxidant storage to help the body to deal with stress. And there are many antioxidants, which we'll talk about in a second. So the interesting thing about other antioxidants, when they donate an electron to, um, to a free radical, very often they either become a free radical themselves or reduce in a way where the body still has to spend a lot of energy to eliminate it. So they're good donors, but not the best donors. What's fascinating about hydrogen is that it's a donor that just gives and, and it just is. It doesn't, it doesn't, it essentially becomes, I'll show you some examples of how it turns into a water, but it's no longer, the body doesn't have to deal with any byproduct. And that's what's beautiful. So when we look at it, I remember we, told, we, we discussed the fact that it's the lightest, and the smallest antioxidant found in the universe, or at least so far that humans that we were able to find. The size of it, if you compare it to antioxidants, to other antioxidants you might be consuming in your food or in supplementation, is dramatically different. Hydrogen is 176 times um, smaller, um, or is dihydrogen, or H2, is half of that of a vitamin C, and a vitamin C is an incredible antioxidant. Anybody who knows me, heard me speak on nutrition or preventative medicine, I love vitamin C. There's over 50,000 periodic reviewed papers on vitamin C alone. 10% of that on vitamin C and cancer. It's an incredible antioxidant. It gets into the cell. It looks very much like sugar, so cancer cells suck it in, and what it does, it destroys it from within. They, it literally expo explodes that, that cancer cell. So it's a fantastic, it's like a perfect chemo agent, and it's a very powerful antioxidant. So this very powerful antioxidant is so much larger than our hydrogen. And then you look at coenzyme U10, a glutathione, vitamin E, and the like, all of these antioxidants are incredible, and you should always strive to get them from your diet and lifestyle. However, they cannot compare to the antioxidant like hydrogen. It's so small, it's like trying to, you know, parking uh, the, uh, yeah, you know, parking a bicycle versus parking a big bus. So how do you get that into the cell? How do you get that to actually work on your body on a deep level? 
So this is a fantastic study, and that is the, um, how the vitamin C is enhanced by threefold with when it's used with hydrogen-rich water, with ERW water. So our water, so we're talking about incredible vitamin C and all its anti-cancer potential, phenomenal for cardiovascular system, like ground substance and arteries, arteries and a lot, of, a lot of activities in cardiovascular system, as Dr. Filter said, it's phenomenal, and how, how, how much uh, nutrients and how much our body is required, how much our heart is needing, um, the proper elements. And so antioxidant, like vitamin C, is phenomenal. So what if you could actually get that second best antioxidant to work three times stronger and three times better than it would have without it. So it's just really fantastic what, in, uh, what ERW can do to, our, um, to, to vitamin C and other antioxidants. So hydrogen acts as a therapeutic antioxidant by selectively reducing uh, cytotoxic oxygen radicals. This is a really fascinating point. So we talked about there are many antioxidants to, to, uh, to essentially work and put away and destroy or neutralize the free radicals. And the interesting thing is there are some free radicals in our body that actually have a biological, biochemical importance and a function in our body. So what's interesting about hydrogen, it's a very selective antioxidant. It actually will not neutralize the oxidant that our body requires. There are certain oxidative processes that are happening in your body that are good and that are needed. So it will selectively only take care and neutralize the, anti, the oxidants that do not have that, that have a cytotoxic, cellular toxic effect. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. So I'll read this over to you. Stress is, uh, um, <clears throat> the person next to stress is accepted as one of the causes of many common diseases, including cancer. So we're just talking about oxidative stress is really bad. Um, we show here that, that hydrogen, H2, has a potential as an antioxidant in preventative and therapeutic application. We induce acute oxidative stress in cultured cells by three independent methods. H2 is selectively reduced uh, the, the, the hydroxyl radical, the most cytotoxic of um, reactive oxygen species, and effectively protected the cells. However, H2 did not react with the reactive oxygen species, which possess physiological role in your human or animal body. And that's incredible. So this study became a monumental study, and this is why we have 1,600 researchers are looking at hydrogen since 2007. So the power of hydrogen, as you saw that study, it talked about the reactive oxygen species like the hydroxyl radical. This is one of the most toxic free radical to our physiological body. And the most incredible thing about hydrogen, that it's very easily neutralizes this, turning it into water. So you have one of the most toxic free radicals out there that's causing a lot of damage to a human physiological body, and you have this incredible hydroxyl radical that just disseminates it without any byproduct, without any damage, and without any essentially giving your body what it needs, water. Isn't that amazing? How many of you know what mitochondria is? All of you? Most of you? Some of you. Mitochondria are engines of your cells. Just imagine the engine in the car that pretty much keeps that going, keeps that running. So you have multiple mitochondria in your cells. Those mitochondria, those energy uh, elements, those energy organelles inside of your cell produce energy all the time. They produce something we call ATP. What's incredible, of course, is mitochondria is being stressed a lot around by the environment and toxic stress and emotional, physical, mental stress through our body. So it gets affected. Stressed mitochondria will very often produce a lot of free radicals or a lot of toxic byproducts. So that's what happens to stressed mitochondria. What hydrogen can do, we told you already that it can easily take care of one of the most toxic free radical. The incredible thing, it can also donate and make your other antioxidant that the body produces work better. So what it does, it upregulates other antioxidants in your body. 
So we all run out of antioxidants. We have the systems built in in our body to constantly deal with stress, to constantly keep us alive, to keep us, uh, you know, to, to survive. It's, it's our survival mechanism. And so we have those, we have, we have that process always activated in our body. But the incredible thing about uh, the antioxidant and the hydrogen is that it allows for those depleted storages or that antioxidant production to be boosted up threefold or whatever, whatever that requires. But it's incredible at making that, uh, making that process of antioxidant creation or upregulating those incredible enzymes and those incredible antioxidants that the body is creating. So it makes your own antioxidant stronger and then it also is an antioxidant that is very smart. Um, and this is the mechanism of this and how it reduces oxidative stress through specific pathways and, um, and works with them really, really well. Let's take a look at another study. And this is just to show you, this actually comes from a fantastic review done by a Japanese uh, board. Um, and it's an incredible review of a lot of different studies that were summarized in this paper. So I just, I'm gonna have a few pictures for you uh, that discuss this paper. So a function of, uh, the interesting thing, the Japanese look at this and they, they call this the functional therapeutic effect. So they show that hydrogen electrolyzed reduced water gives us a lot of functional um, um, therapeutic modalities. The antioxidant hydrogen is found to be an incredible medical grade antioxidant. So, um, and has a therapeutic value, meaning that it can deal with physiological elements. So we now biologically, biochemically know that it's therapeutically very viable on any human or any human model, a disease model. Clinical data suggests that ERW improves oxygen stress-related diseases. It scavengers re uh, reactive oxygen species and inhibits the damage to the DNA. So what's incredible about an antioxidant like free radical, uh, like, like um, hydrogen or H2, is that it upregulates the function of your antioxidants. It upregulates and modulates the function of your cells. And it's also uh, s strongly protects the RNA and DNA function in your body. So it's very good at protecting RNA and DNA of your body. And so essentially protecting your genetics. Anti-cancer effects. We already know and we've heard and we've seen and we assume we understand how um, important antioxidants are when it comes to cancer, right? You guys understand that our water is a very good beneficial substance in preventing and supporting our body at dealing with the condition that we refer to as cancer. Correct? Awesome. So this is the, the mechanism of that is that it actually works it, through multiple, multiple ways. Uh, when we look at science, and here's just several of them um, listed, ERW causes telemeter shortening in cancer cells. So essentially their longevity dramatically diminishes. It suppresses tumor angiogenesis, and that is when your tumor essentially grows the vessels and spreads. So it's the growth of, um, of, of the cancer cells. By scavenging intracellular reactive oxygen species, suppressing the gene expression and secretion of vascular endothelium growth factor, suppresses the growth of cancer cells um, in micro and, and microorganisms. So it suppresses its growth and vitality, and it upregulates all of the things that can deal with it. This is why it's so effective, and that's why we see uh, people getting really good results um, using this. And this is why we have a lot of studies associated with cancer. When it comes to um, anti uh, neurodegenerative disease, the, um, it suppresses uh, neurological dis, um, I guess, um, uh, the premature cell death or uh, toxicity and essentially dysfunction. So it's really, it shows to be very, very protective when it comes to uh, neurology and brain tissue and health of our brain. So it's really fantastic and showed incredible effects and Dr. Filzer has mentioned how important importance in brain and neurological health as well. So it's fantastic in, again, passing the brain blood barrier. It is the lightest, smallest element. It can easily penetrate the brain blood barrier hydrate your brain, nutrient essentially your brain, provide this protective neurological uh, function and help the person feel better um, and therefore, um, you know, could potentially be very uh, encouraging in, when it comes to brain degeneration and brain diseases that are associated. 
conclusions and perspective when it comes to this particular research uh, comp compilation. It suppress oxidative stresses. Mechanism of action reduce uh, scavenging RS considering to be, um, they are considering to be very complicated. And as I said, it's still gonna take many years to come for the scientists to fully come to conclusion or a better understanding of, of all the potential that hydrogen has. And uh, it has a fantastic redox uh, regulation factors that can be induced in gene expression and antioxidant enzymes. 